Mr. Scott here with a mini video discussing the connection between elevation and air pressure. And you might be wondering why am I dressed up in a bicycling outfit? Well, let me tell you. I'm up here between seven and 9,000 feet getting ready to go on a training ride in preparation for the Alta Alpina Double Century, which is a 200 mile bicycle ride in the South Lake Tahoe area. And it has over 20,000 feet of climbing. All of that climbing takes place between that seven and 9,000 feet. And I'm only from 1,300 feet, and so there's a huge difference in elevation. So I want to find out the effects of elevation on my body and how I'm going to perform at this higher altitude. You see, the higher you go in altitude, the thinner the air becomes. That means there's less oxygen or less air molecules in a given space. It means it's harder to breathe. On the other hand, at low elevations, which I'm not at, uh, there's more molecules or more air molecules in a given space. It's easier to get in oxygen into the bloodstream and for the bloodstream to get that oxygen to the muscles. All right. <clears throat> you can think of air pressure working like this. Think of it as a stack of quarters. And in a stack of quarters, the quarter at the bottom is going to have the weight of all the other quarters pushing down on it. Well, that's air pressure pushing down. So you see low altitude say like sea level, you're going to have all the molecules above it, air molecules that is, pushing down, creating what's called high air pressure. Now, all of that weight pushing down is also going to cause those air molecules to be pushed together or condensed, uh, and so there's more air molecules in a given space. It means there's more oxygen, and it's easier to get oxygen into the body. On the other hand, think of that top quarter. Well, it doesn't have any weight pushing down on it. So that would be considered low air pressure. Now, with low air pressure, because you don't have the weight pushing down, air is able to spread out. And so with uh, air molecules able to spread out like that, you don't have um, the same uh, density of air molecules or oxygen in a given space. <clears throat> we call that, we refer to that as the uh, air being thinner. And so up here at this higher altitude, it's harder for the body, for me, to get oxygen into the bloodstream, and it's harder uh, to get that, uh, that very needed oxygen into the muscle. So at low elevation, the air pressure is going to be much higher because of all the molecules stacked up and pressing down. It's going to cause the molecules to be more dense at the lower elevation, creating a higher air pressure. In contrast, an important effect of lower air pressure is that in any volume of air, there's going to be fewer molecules. This effect is referred to as Boyle's Law. Now whether you're at a higher elevation where the pressure is lower or low elevation where the pressure is higher, the percentage of oxygen in the air is always going to be the same and that's going to be 21 percent. It's just that there are fewer molecules of everything that's present. So though the percentage of oxygen is the same in the atmosphere, the thinner air simply means that there's less oxygen molecules to breathe.